favorite things that I just learned about you that I didn't know, and I think a lot of people probably know you from your your cookbooks and cooking and, and t- being on TV, cooking and everything. That was not your like trajectory in life. Mm-mm. And those kind of stories are my favorite because it's kind of like God's like, okay, this is really cool what you're doing, but I'm going to show you what I what I have for you. So can we go all the way back to what you before what we know now? And can you talk to us about when you were in TV and producing and on the other side of the camera? Yeah, I always wanted to be, um, I always wanted to be a reporter. And I wanted to be specifically Christian Amanpour. I wanted to be an international reporter going to the front lines of things that were happening that were not right. Mm. And and that started because I, I grew up in Dubai during the Gulf War and the news in, in the Emirates is censored. And so I had never seen real reporting. What I had seen was people, you know, doing what they could, which was to rip news off the wires and, and present it. Mm-hmm. But to have someone actually there where things were happening was a whole new thing for me. And that just opened my eyes. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And so I went to university for it. I studied journalism. I graduated. I interned at CNN. I interned at NPR. I interned everywhere. And then when I graduated, I got a job at CNN, which was amazing. And I was like, well, that wasn't so hard. This is everything I ever wanted to do. Here I am, except that I was producing. I wasn't in front of the camera. I was behind the camera. And I thought, well, you know what? That's okay. I'm paying my dues. One day, God willing. Well, I didn't say God willing back then. One day, (laughs) maybe I'll get my chance, you know? And I kept trying and um, it always felt like, something in me didn't fit there. Um, And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the news business. I think that I was lacking something. Mm. There was, there was something that wasn't fitting. And then my, at that time I was in Chicago and then eventually in New York and my husband was in LA because he's an actor and we got married and I moved to LA and I thought, well, there's news everywhere. I'll just work in news there. And that's when the bottom fell out of the news industry and the bottom fell out of my life. I was like, I couldn't find a job to save my life. I interviewed everywhere. And I just sat there on the couch, um, twiddling my thumbs going, now what in the world am I going to do? And I would drink lots of coffee because I could because I was 20 something. I was like, nobody can tell me what to do. I would drink tons of coffee. I'd watch TV until the view. And then I was like, now the soap operas come on and I can't do that because I know who I am. Yeah. (laughs) So the one thing that had always been something that I loved and brought me peace was watching cooking shows. I watched them with my mom and my sisters. And I come from a long line of great cooks on both sides of my family. My mom always wanted to open a restaurant. She has a hospitality degree. Like it was real. Yeah. And, you know, I, I still remember one of my mom's proudest moments was my dad was a businessman and they had gone to this cocktail party in Dubai and a woman came over. And when my mom introduced herself, she was like, oh my goodness, are you Rose Sequera who makes the incredible prawn biryani? And she was like, yes, like <laughs> word had spread right yeah so I that's my lineage and so Mm -hmm. but I was always like I'm going to be a journalist um and my parents didn't look at cooking as a career right you know so I started cooking in my desperation and I it was my solace and it was my comfort and it was this way that I could exert control over chaos where I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing in life, but I knew that I was supposed to chop that onion and saute it in oil and it would turn into marinara eventually, you know? And so that's a taking over. And my husband got me a gift certificate to a little cooking school in my neighborhood that I could walk to, which is unheard of in LA. And that kind of started the whole thing for me because I I don't know. I really was, I was really in a bad place. It felt like the will, it, when I look back at it, it feels like the wilderness years where, mm-hmm. you know, God pulled me out of Egypt, except I didn't feel like I was enslaved. You know, I was like living the good life uh-huh. over there. And then I was pulled into this wilderness where frankly, I think he stripped everything away from me. Like, who do you actually think you are? Mm. And I think I was so connected to this idea of like, I am a journalist. This is what I do. And this is who I am that, um, 
he needed to remind me, um, no, on your little ID card, uh -huh. it actually says you're mine. And that's first and foremost. And so that was actually in that time was when um, Jesus saved me and that became the driving force for everything. Mm -hmm.